Hello, I'm Glenda Gloria, Executive Editor of Rappler, and you are watching Newsbake Chats. Newsbake Chats is Rappler's bi-weekly program where we talk to our journalists about the latest in-depth and investigative reports that they have worked on. With me today is a fellow veteran journalist, Indai Espina Verona, who leads our editorial team and coverage of the regions. We are talking uh, to her today about something that happened in August in summer, which for many years was a stronghold of the communist New People's Army. The sea encounter of the coast of Tarangan, an eight-hour boat chase, would just have been any ordinary military encounter except for credible reports that those killed in that incident were the most powerful couple in the communist underground, Benito and Wilma Tiamzon. Hello, Indai. Hi, Canada. Hi. So tell us uh, first, why does it matter or why should it matter that it's almost certain that the military got the Tiamzons in this particular operation? Uh, tell us more about them. Well, one, we know that, I mean, since the peace talks, when they came out, we, we do know they are the top leaders in the country of the Communist Party of the Philippines. Um, they were released on bail um, during the peace talks and were ordered rearrested when pres former President Duterte scuttled the talks in 2017. Um, now, Glenda, a lot of the peace talks consultants are back in jail, but the Chansons managed to go underground with a few other central committee members and ended up in Samar, you know. And important siguro because in context, you know, itong last year, we've had many top uh, rebels falling, no? um, whether by natural causes or in encounters, in battles, arrested. And um, when we come to think of it, pag tinanong mo, ilan na ang natitira sa, sa, well, admittedly aging, you know, leaders of the communist insurgency, malaki nga to ang impact ng, if indeed they are dead, malaki ang impact niyan. Oo. So, mabalik tayo. So, the Chamsons kasi have been rebels since the start of the revolution, ganun ba? And, yes, and they were students back then in UP, Nag isa sila sa mga unang nag underground when martial law was declared Canada. Okay. So um, now uh, uh, probably we'd like to familiarize our readers again and watchers about what um, the story was all about. Um, um, in your series with our correspondent, uh, Jasmine Bonifacio, you wrote about an eight month operation that culminated in that encounter of the seas of summer in August. So, unang-una siguro, parang, bakit may ganitong operation na eight months na nilaunch ang military dun sa period na yon And uh, ano ang na-discover nyo as to what prompted that? Well, I think that um, the summer operations stems from Duterte's EO-70. Remember, he, he, or he made an EO ordering the military to focus on three regions. So that's Bicol, um, Samar, and Negros Occidental and Oriental, Negros Islands, um, where they are concerned, ito yung medyo ma malakas pa yung NPA dyan. But um, I think from what um, General De Leon, the former um, Joint Task Force um, commander, he he retired soon after that. Um, oh, did that he? Story. Yes, he's been replaced by uh, Brigadier General Oliveros. Um, he he's uh, apparently enjoying his retirement. Um, oh. Says, yeah, it's his yeah. retirement. In a way, that's his uh, final. His one feather in his cap. Yeah, you know, he went off in glory. It, it, we, uh, in military parlance, of course. Yeah, yeah. And, but but what he told us was that um, the key factors there were the arrests and the surrenders of people who actually knew the ins and outs 
of the insurgency in Samar. Now, Glenda, we know, you know, the military presence, surrenderers, no, and dami. And sometimes, you know, we take it with a grain of salt. But apparently in, a, in, in, in Samar, in at least three cases, arrests led to people turning around and sila raw ang nakapag-confirm at nakapagbigay ng general um, locations of where the top lead CPP leaders were. And he did say that it wasn't just Benito, Benito and Wilma. And in fact, before the August 20 to vote explosion, ito yung culmination nila, meron namatay no, ang head, ang alleged head of the summer MPA Regional Command. And then there was another arrested um, a senior member of the CPP. Uh, inako naman ito ng rebel. So, medyo sunod-sunod talaga yon. And they decided to go for it. Plus, meron silang bagong pinasok sa summer na element which could have been decisive. Ito yung air um, complement nila sa ground crew. But, but which makes me wonder if there were a lot of, uh, well, significant surrenders on the part of the communist rebels in that area. So, ibig sabihin ba nun, the military has somehow regained uh, yung uh, trust of certain uh, sectors of the communities there? And what did they do actually to, to be able to convince these former rebels to talk and to cooperate? Two things that the, the formal former rebels I'm talking about were actually captured and then turned. You know? So hindi sila yung general na convinced, you know. Um, we don't know how they were convinced in captivity, but they turned. Um, but there is also um, the element of money. So carrot and stick, Glenda, no? Um, if you don't cooperate, then you know that we're going to be launching. You know, we'll be having a hard time. But then there's the NTF LCAC dangling, um, 20 million pesos per barangay, per cleared barangay, and that also matters because that 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 apparently got um, barangay officials um, cooperating, although in the long run, medyo questionable yan. and um, in fact, even some rebel returnees are. Have, I think in our story also, Glenn, no, we also mentioned that um, they're, they're warning that it's easy money and if basic reforms aren't really done, then it will come to nothing. But in the short run, it worked. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, back to, to the Chemzon operation. Um, I remember that day when there, there was a lot of chatter that the Chemzon's were actually the victims of that uh, boat explosion, but neither the CPP nor the military actually um, confirmed it, right? I mean, the military had initial reports posted on social, but uh, there was really no categorical confirmation from either side. So faced with those constraints, how did you and Jasmine approach the story and, and what were the uh, certain news processes that you had to follow to 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 write it. Actually, kahit sa atin, walang categorical na sinabi si General De Leon that these were the champsons. He was very careful about that. But when we started asking for details, then he did mention that the last thing they were doing before the explosion was tracking the movements of the champsons. So when we got that, when we started na, we, but before we talked to him, the moment they said possible Chamson couple, we gathered all the, um, all the articles, you know, that we could get on what had happened in the last year, just to see if there was a pattern, you know, just to see if um, we could find anything that would lead to this incident. Um, and then that's when we started asking uh, the general, who Glenda, I must say, um, was refreshingly upfront. Um, yes. You know, he was he he had security, operational security in mind, and there were things that could not tell us. But but overall, he did give a very good picture of of what happened, and he gave credit, pala, um, to to 
others. You know, he said he had arrived in December 2021, and but previous to that, that's when he mentioned. Uh, that's when we started kinalkal namin yung mga ibang stories. He said, "Ang decisive to on was the aerial runs in um, in uh, of Samar that forced." He said the large um, NPA formations there to to scatter into smaller groups. That he said was easier to track na because the joint task force storm um, combination of land, sea, and air. No, it, they would go out for weeks. You know, sabi niya. But that's basically what we did. We researched first and and made a well, a rough ma ma matrix of ito yung mga nang ano, tapos that's how we started coming up. Anong pwede matanong natin by General De Leon? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because, and I agree with you, it's, it's refreshing and and I hope uh, all the military commanders follow that path of being somehow open to the media as far as military operations anyway kung tapos na especially di ba? Oh, oh. Tapos considerations na. if it's ongoing but if it's a post mort of sort and and there are lessons to be learned from those operations it would be always be good to to talk about them uh and the one you mentioned about parang so in a way nagkaroon ng gradual constriction you know in the, you remember this from from the 1990s nagkaroon din ng ganong strategy military gradual constriction sa mga specific areas so ganito ba ang nangyari sa summer because even in your story you also cite that geography really helped uh, the communists as far as summer is concerned build the army and build the community so in this sense ba in a way it also went against it um in that sense once um with the, we mentioned in dagat di ba so there's the eastern there's the northern summer eastern summer part na pacific na yan eh then the the summer part and some parts of eastern summer ito yung inner sea that leads to other islands of of the the philippines no and um strategic yun para sa mga, sa cpp um because doon ang in and out and ang daming mga coves and ano raw doon um, not only general de leon said that but meron silang he arrest john glenda eh, before the before the the arrest din of a, the top cpp um civilian real no a top cpp official parang na, narinig ko sa ibang channel na they presented him as a surrenderer but actually pala captured ito logistics and transport eh, na ano nila so medyo oops medyo ano yan um strategic um win yan para sa kanila by land naman they were pushing from northern samar to the tri boundary areas no mm -hmm. and then using the river units kasi yan talaga yung labanan pala dun sa samar and pushing them towards northern summer towards summer kasi mas madaling ma corner raw ata doon sa summer kesa sa northern summer summer um, summer part oh. wow that's interesting mm -hmm. um pero ano ba ang nasa summer inday uh, batang reporter pa tayo lagi ng bailuwi uh -huh. ng ano ang NPA kung i-associate mo yung Samar sa, sa rebellion, di ba? Sa kahirapan din. What's in Samar uh, that that really makes communism thrive? And and has the situation changed over the years? Vast poverty. It's such a beautiful island. Probably one of the most beautiful in the Philippines. But poverty there is so extreme. It always comes up in the most impoverished, yung tatlong yan, Tatlong Redua, Samar, Northern Samar, Eastern Samar. Eastern Samar and Northern Samar in particular always come up among the poorest provinces in the country no? for for the longest time. Actually, recently lang na medyo nawala ang Northern Samar sa top 10. No? Um, but even now, you can see na medyo ang Eastern Samar flat yung growth niya, hindi nagbabago. So it's always been that way. And two, if we look at our history books, Talagang may 
streak of rebelliousness ang waray, no? Balangiga, you know? Uh, that's that's where the howling, you know? That's where the Americans, um, what, practice their, their, their most intense counterinsurgency tactics, di ba, somewhere. And even during martial law, it's the... It's not just poverty. Many studies have said, not just poverty. It's the extreme. Um, it's the glaring um, difference the between the very the gap between the very few rich, which by the way included one Ponce and Rile during martial law, the Kenyan lumber firm it was the biggest. The security forces of that firm, Glenda, were were, were linked to the worst martial law atrocity ito yung um massacre dun sa Samar no yung panahon na yan and and may mga really gross na mga ginawa no na ang mga tauhan ni Enrique doon so yun vast poverty you know a few rich um who who would then use coercion and extreme force to to beat people into um into being subservient so that's the usual recipe for rebellion wherever in the world we go, diba? That's true. Naalala mo, Palparan was also assigned in that area. True, no? Um, ano lang, six months lang si Palparan. That's right. That trail of blood left. But there was a difference, no? I'm, I'm going to credit probably um, General De Leon and, and his officers for this. In the six months of Palparan, um, you can call it a military victory because he was a butcher. He killed mostly civilians. Kokonti lang naman ang kanyang tunay na underground rebels na pinatay. He targeted civilians. He targeted activists. Um, when we wrote the third part of our of our series, we quoted, di ba, human rights um, groups and everything. And we did see merong, merong, merong lugar na especially nung may aerial, napilitan silang umalis, meron, siyempre, merong surveillance, but there was, there, it was absent of the butchery that we had seen, not just in Palparan, but in other also military officers. I think um, the what really struck out with Samar was um, how they focused on mas methodical um, sila doon, hindi bara-bara. Yeah, and and that goes to prove that, de ba, um, this um, old adage na talagang there's nothing beats good intelligence and and nothing True. beats uh, methodical work. Um, so I suppose uh, uh, the operation of De Leon in Samar should be in a way parang a model of sorts again, given all this hype against communism and and the very ring towards a more militaristic ano de ba as we had seen in the last six years under Duterte. Um, so, true, did, how, how did, so in a way, that did not conform to the Duterte mindset, the kind of methodical operation that was done in Samar? Or are we saying that um, it's not also fair that uh, to say that under Duterte, lahat parang butchery din yung naging... Uh, it's probably fair to... Like, Negros... Dumugo yan, Glenda. Mga civilians ang pinagpapatay sa Negros. Ito lang this. Ngayon lang yan yung mga NPA talaga. No, for the longest time, sa Negros, civilians yan. Kaya nga, medyo stand out nga talaga naman si um, General De Leon. Um, the, is, yes and no. Um, hindi siya, I don't think, uh, parang yun, medyo unique konte yung military um um performance doon sa summer but yung NTFL kak yung pagbaha ng pera at um ang pagcordon you know ng mga communities medyo kay Duterte talaga yan no the other presidents probably um force hamleting and on pero um Duterte being Duterte knew how to push people's buttons you know ba ayan ng pera yan no so nandiyan yan but will it work um Glenda recently, you know, yung one of the communities they were ready to declare cleared, um, in attack ng NPA, no, sa Hipapad, di ba? Um, uh, just a few years ago, declared nilang NPA personal ng grata, and um, 
hear the MPAs have, have come back. Um, ang, ang worry is masusustain ba yung ganung classing operations ni De Leon? Um, it really depends on the military officers then, you know? Because when once you start saying na we are going to talk to the people, we want to know bakit nagkaganito na to, we want to know ano nangyari dyan sa mga taong yan, parang medyo kakabahan ka because then you know hindi ang people ang medyo being blamed. So you wonder when the cycle begins again. And ganito naman lagi sa atin. Di ba? Uh, Fidel Ramos managed to rein in the the bloodiest of the military and succeeded in 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 many ways um, doing that. And then we returned again to butchers. So, para tayong cycles na cycles dito. Eh. Yeah, I think they're saying that part of the pressure, kasi is the military and and any new president would always promise to end the insurgency during his specific term, de ba? But you know they've been saying that for the longest time, and and here we are uh, still dealing with it. And I'm uh, you mentioned Negros, and recently you also uh, we also ran a story and together with our correspondent in Bacolod, Marcel, about the series of attacks also in Negros, in particular yung Himamaylan, de ba? Is that Chicks area, uh, Inday? Um, or... Chicks, yeah. That, uh, no, no, hindi siya kasama. That's it's actually central Negros. It's just before the Chicks area, but it's strategic. There's an open. It's one of the biggest groves in Negros. And then it's on the border of Oriental. That's always been yan ang daluyan, no? um, yeah, oh. Negros Ridge Island region yan eh, sa mm. sa CPP, no? So yan ang ang Himamaylan is one of the strategic areas para sa o sa para sa movement of rebels. So Sige, yeah. Pa, pakikwento lang anong nangyari ba recently and and uh, uh, sa lalo na yung state of evacuation ngayon. Okay. October 6, this is from the military, no? Um, October 6, the military, the 94th Infantry Battalion, said it stumbled on a group of MPA around 20 to 40 in Sitio Sagang in Himamaylan, in Barangay Karabalan. That's um, that's an upland barangay, but not too far from the city center, actually. No? Um, and so, you know, there was that first encounter Siyempre, takbuhan ng mga tao. Then medyo humupa, and then another bigger encounter nung alas tres sa uh, um, Sitio Medel, neighboring sitio. And doon na nag-report na may mga artillery na, nagpumasok yata military. So of course, um, um, sa first day yata ang naka-cover lang yung broadcast, no? itong bombo na to, kita ko. Very dramatic footage of people running, you know, streaming out of villages. And bumaba sila. Kasi nga, ang sabi nila, malaking putok eh. Parang, yun, alam mo yung to whom it may concern na yan putukan. Hindi na yan baril targeting each other, no? So, takbuhan sila lahat. And then, they were brought to, um, coincidentally, Mamaylan just just opened also in 2OT, a very big um, disaster center, no? And um, that was enough for, for people. And then, sunod-sunod na, Actually, naunahan namatay yung, may namatayan ang military, dalawa, and six wounded. Actually, we sat up there. Ano kaya nangyari noon? Because they did say that they had air support. And then after si Juanito Magbanwa, which was a big um, loss, of course, for the rebels because he's the top um, guy in, in Negros. Um, well, the rebels claimed that he was executed. We don't know what happened. We were not there. No? Um, but day by day, Pataas ng pataas ang number ng evacuees, palapad na palapad ang number of villages. And um, I talked with the, DS, the city welfare um, chief, um, Evergrace Castro, just yesterday, and she said that there were more, almost more than 3,500 families and around 18,000 plus people who have been displaced by one week na, mag one week na, seven days of fighting. Na jaan, no? and we don't know when that's going to end. So far, the evacuees are in good conditions. Um, um, may pagkain, they have enough food. Um, you, our friend pala Alex Baluyot and his art relief kitchen is now okay. there. Um, they're, they're cooking hot meals for Barangay Karabalan. But I think 
it's the anxiety of people. Eh. They know that bombs are falling. They know that artillery is exploding. And they know that the only things that will sustain them in life, their animals, their farms, are, are, are of course, um, very vulnerable. So, nung Marcel was able to go to, to two highland evacuation centers yesterday, Linda, and yun pa ulit ulit eh, umiyat ang mga tao, because they know that they are safe now and they are glad to be safe, of course. They are glad that they're not in the line of fire, but they wonder afterwards what will our lives be like. Yeah. So this is, you know, uh, we're, we're talking about Eastern Summer and, and Negros Occidental, both uh, long time uh, bastions of, of the NPA. And if you look overall, talagang dun naman yung, uh, apart from Bicol and parts of Southern Luzon in Quezon, ito talaga yung may natitirang matibay pa sa, sa New People's Army. So ito ba, itong offensive sa Negros recently, Ano to? Ito na ba yung final push sa Visayan, sa, sa Visayas areas of, of, the, of the stronghold so that then um, in the next five years, uh, lilipat sa Southern Tagalog and then mag-final push uli doon? Or, uh, what are you sensing? Where is this coming from? And ha, ha, is, what is the military intending to do uh, in the, in the um, given this situation? Well, I mean, even General De Leon would not say that. He did say they were weakened. He had no illusions. He said um, that doesn't mean they can come back. That doesn't mean they're finished. Sabi niya. Because, and more, even more interesting, the very ex-rebels that helped join Tasper Storm were also telling us na hindi yan matapos-tapos pag hindi nagawa ito, ito, ito. And these are basically the same reforms that all other people have been telling governments, administrations, na gawin na injustice, more equitable, you know, distribution of wealth in the society, um, et cetera, et cetera. And um, nangyari na to eh, when we studied the history of summer, may mga times na bumabagsak ng todo, ganun din ang negros. Tapos then mga eight years later, six years later, malakas na naman sila. Yes. And, and always it revolves around the same thing. The roots of war in these places have never changed. That's true. Parang ano yun, ano? Cycle of decline, revival, decline. I remember uh, the late President Ramos declaring that the irreversible decline of the communist insurgency after the arrest of the big guns. But here we are again uh, talking about the same problem. But I guess if you were, if I were to ask you, and I am a military commander, and given what you've seen, the various uh, kinds of operations that military commanders had um, deployed or used in, in both Summer and Negros, what would you advise me if I'm a military commander in how to not really completely finish uh, the, the insurgents because uh, uh, those are intractable problems na hindi naman military ang solution. But exactly. how do I conduct myself as a military commander, you think, that would, would be effective uh, in combating insurgency? I think force alone, I think a little compassion works a long, long way in getting people's trust. And sa tingin ko, marami naman sa kanila, alam nila yan eh, di ba? Um, kaya lang minsan, di mo alam kung may political pressure or talagang, you know, um, we need to pile up the medals to get ahead, you know, or, or is it just really ideological? But maybe the military should understand that, that um, dissent, you know, that they should really learn how to differentiate um, between armed guerrillas and legal dissenters because nakikita naman, kinikilala naman sila pag talagang purely military ang kanilang mga victories. It's when it spills over and when civilians and, and when the innocents are tagged and then they say that, you know, my justification for killing these people or arresting these people, that lalong nagiging mas complex ang problema sa isang society. But, um, a little, uh, probably what they should do is emulate De Leon's communication skills, you know. Um, it allows you to 
um, get a better appreciation of the depth of preparations and, and the skills that went into this um, long operation that eventually uh, led to, to, to a major victory for them. Um, minsan kasi hindi ganun kagaling ang mga military officers pag nag explain sila or probably um, they, they, they've been given stock phrases to repeat and repeat which don't really matter kasi nagiging white noise na yan sa maraming journalists. But again, um, it's simple. Um, I think if they're able to push also or encourage, you know, the civilian officials to initiate the man reforms that would allow yung gains nila to remain for a longer time. Hindi yung magbabalik tal agad kasi wala naman pong pabago. Siguro naman may patutunguhan yung kanilang mga um, mga campaign. Yeah, I, I think I remember that the old counterinsurgency program still applies now, which I think would summarize what you just said um, in Dai, which is to clear an area, uh, consolidate, uh, and then hold, and then develop. So that then. The developer will not. Yes, because that is not really just a military action already. So very well said, in Dai. Um, Thank you so much for sharing your insights. Um, the Communist Rebellion is the longest and most enduring in this part of the world. Uh, and there are various reasons for this, as Indai has, has told us. Uh, military operations can only do so much. The examples of Summer and Negros remind us of the roots of the problem, which is that significant parts of the country are still underserved. And in cases where government is present, is badly served. I'm Glenda Gloria. Thank you for watching Newsbreak Chats and see you again next time.